Okay, we're going to talk about ELSD self-installation uh, or reaffirming an installation to make sure it is correct. There are a few things on the back of the ELSD you need to pay attention to before you start using it. On the back here, we have a nitrogen supply. And it's also critical to know that this blue tube is six millimeters in diameter. It is not a quarter inch. Do not stick a quarter inch tube into this hole. This is six millimeter. It's metric. Okay, next thing. Gas supply, nitrogen, about 60 PSI. Analog output, one volt signal output right here. Use the one volt output to your A to D box. Hook up your gas, hook up your signal, hook up your power. Turn the unit on. This is everything you have to do on the back. Now I'm going to rotate the unit. We took the cover off so you could see inside for those who are curious about what's inside an ELSD. And on the front, you have the control panel. And we're looking at the stray light level here is 128 millivolts, 50 degrees Celsius, gain 12, and we have no gas on here right now because it makes too much noise. But here on the front is crucial too. This is your nebulizer. The nebulizer is your light scattering, depends on evaporative light scattering detection. In order to evaporate, you need to nebulize first. And then the, the nebulized droplets travel through this glass cell into an orthogonal bend, which is a 90 degree bend. The large droplets will crash out, drain, and you'll have a drain line that runs down here to a solvent bottle. And your tiny MIE droplets will go into this drift tube, into the detector, be evaporated, and then scattered in the optical cell here at the top. These ELSDs are the low temperature ELSD because of the length of this drift tube. This drift tube here is about a meter long so you can use much lower temperatures to evaporate water. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but water also evaporates at ambient temperature, just much slower. So if you have more time, you can use less heat. That's why the Cetexes here have low temperature capability, hence the name LTELSD. And this is where the magic occurs in your optical cell. So once you hooked up your back connections, you check your front connections, make sure your gas connection and nebulizer are connected. Hook up your drain line. I just have a sol solvent beaker here for now. But you hook that to a line to a waste bottle in front of the detector because one ml a minute will add up very fast. That's 60 ml an hour. That's 600 ml in 10 hours. In 24 hours, that's a lot of, a lot of solvent. So you want to have a large reservoir for the front of the unit. And the last and most critical thing is you got to make sure your exhaust line, this guy, goes to a vacuum hood, and it is not coupled directly to a vacuum hood. This needs to go into a elephant trunk with a parabolic dish on the bottom and attached to the rim of the parabolic. Because if you stick this inside of a strong vacuum, it'll draw too much negative pressure and cause this detector to malfunction. You want to see a very stable liquid level in this, this U-trap. We call this the, the gooseneck and you want to see equal meniscuses of liquid in this little U-shape. And if it's bubbling in or blowing out, you have a pressure differential issue. You want to have a stable liquid slug here. Because the atmospheric pressure inside the detector needs to be equal to the atmospheric pressure outside. Except there's nitrogen in there and we breathe air out here. But this will tell you right here if there's a problem with your exhaust. And exhaust is a constant problem I run into with clients because people either have it too strong of a vacuum or they have a complete blockage and then the detector doesn't work. And we go in and it takes me five minutes to fix and pays, pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> so we're trying to help you avoid those simple problems. And that is the basic setup you need to know for hooking up your ELSD reliably.